If you want to see me create my first look using the Tiny Marvels palette by Mel Thompson and Sydney Grace, then stick around. Hi there, it's Elaine, and oh, I am so excited. I am going to be playing with this palette for the first time. If you are not familiar with it, it is an indie brand release uh, by Sydney Grace and it was the creation of Mel Thompson as far as the uh, the color story um, itself and of course the names of all the shadows so let me just show you the inside. So we have 15 beautiful shades and we have a big mirror and what I like about this palette is that it is colorful but it is soft colorful and I think that that makes it far more approachable for a lot of people. And it also pulls more to the cool side, in my opinion, than the warm side. And I think that there are not that many cool toned palettes to choose from out there. And so it is, I don't know, it's just really nice to see this kind of array of colors. And so when I did the swatches, and I'll put those swatches video right there, when I, did, when I did the swatches, it was a day where it just didn't make sense for me to try to do a look. And this was just a few days ago. And it's been bugging me. Ha. Huh. Bugging me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, tiny marbles. Sure. Uh, it's been bugging me since then that, that I haven't done a, a look. And like I said, it's been a couple of days, but that just tells you how much I want to use the palette. And I did not want to use it off camera because I wanted to share it with you, of course, my first impressions. So uh, I've been good and I haven't, I've swatched, I've gone back and swatched again, but I have not put anything of this palette on my eyes. So we are doing that today. And I just want to mention a little bit about Mel. Mel is the sweetest, most giving person uh, I see on YouTube. She is Based on everything that I hear, she is giving of her attention, her time. She is kind, thoughtful, um, great YouTuber, puts a lot of time and attention into her videos. She cares about her content. She cares about giving good information and being fair to makeup brands, creators, other YouTubers. She, You can tell she has a heart of gold and despite some significant personal challenges, ongoing personal challenges, she gives it her all and I think she's quite an inspiration to a lot of us here on YouTube. Well, on and off YouTube, I'll say. Okay, so I just wanted to say this because Mel's a big reason that I bought this palette. A really big reason. I wanted to try Sydney Grace and I kept, it, it was on my list, on my list, on my list, and the moment this palette was revealed, I knew that this was the palette that was going to enable me to try Sydney Grace. And it's because of Mel. It's absolutely because of Mel. Okay, now I'm going to play with this thing. And if you're curious, it's $52 US. Uh, they are doing a pre-order that's going to ship in um, end of September. So if you are curious about this palette, you can definitely get your hands on it, even though the first run sold out. I, I had an alarm set. To order this palette um, when it was first released and I've never done that. I have really never done that. So it tells you how captivating it was for me and I'm usually more of a vibrant color person but when, when Mel swatched it in her reveal a few days before it was available for sale she just she just had me. She had me and it's just wonderful that the color story is, I think, unique. And of course, some of the shadows in here I've seen before, but, but the color story is unique. And it's, I'm just, I'm just really excited. So I'm going to stop now because <laughs> I'm not using eyeshadow. I'm just talking. And we're going to get into here. And I have been debating. I don't want to use Scarab because that's the obvious one I want to use and I want to use shadows that I would not I would not normally go straight to. So Scarab is out, Marvel and Mohawk are out because those are also two that I would go straight to. I think 
I think I'm going to use this middle column here. And we'll add from other shadows if needed. I think I'll add with this one and this one as well. But we'll we'll go with the with the middle here. So I'm going to start with this color in. Do I want to start with this color in the crease? No, I'm going to do mantis in the crease. I'm going to do mantis in the crease and then outer lid and inner lid, I think. That's what I'm going to do. I never put green in the crease. Let me do that. I always use a neutral. And no, we're going to do something different and new. So mantis it is. And I'm going to use my fluffiest crease brush, which is a Quo brush. I don't have the name of it anymore. Quo is a Canadian brand. And the, the mattes are very powdery. They kick up a lot. So you just, all you do is you lightly tap your brush into the shadow and you will get, you will get plenty. So I'm going to go right into the crease here, as I said I would. Not a bad start. Just picking up the kick up. It shows for a pastel -y kind of color, it shows up really, really well. I am impressed. And I'm going to go higher up with it. I'm so chicken. I started low to see how it's going to be, and then now I'm working my way up. Does anybody else do that? With a new palette, I like to just kind of go in using caution and then seeing what happens. Oh, this is so pretty. <laughs> this is so pretty. Whatever is, use, is left on the brush, I'm going to use on the very, very inner brow here. Oh, that's so pretty. So pretty. I knew I would like Mantis. Ah. Oh. It just drew me in, and the fact that it's right at the center or in the center of the palette, I don't know if Mel did that on purpose, but wowza. Okay. Um, I think... I'm going to go all over the lid with it as well. So I'm going to take a more of a packer brush. So I'm going to take this brush right here and go into Mantis and just go all over the lid. And it has more of an aqua color when it is more um, packed more fully. I am not a person who likes green all over the lid. Not monochromatic like this, but Mantis is just a different green to me. It's really, it feels very unique compared to other greens I've seen like this. I'm going to change my brush to the angled brush because I'm going to bring that green below. And I only put the green on the one side of the brush that's going to be toward the lash line so that I don't have it go too far down. Okay, that, that is really pretty. I could even do a one shadow look with this color. It's, it's, it's very, very fetching. But that would be a little boring, so we're not going to do that. I'm going to go into web, which is this one right here, and I'm going to just do the brow bone real quick. Okay. And... I'm going to go now into Death Moth and uh, take care of the outer lid. And I'm going to start off with a smaller crease brush and go into Death Moth. And again, just tapping my brush in. Does not take very much. Put a little bit on my brush and I'm going to go on the outer lid and outer crease.
picking up the kick up. a little bit more and I think I'm going to go into spider next to just deepen that up a little bit more and spider is this deeper color in the corner here and it does look like a deepener shade and I'm going to I think I think I'm going to use the same fluffy brush because I don't want to uh, deepen death moth too too much a little bit more it took a bit to build that color up when I did the swatches so I'm not surprised to have to go back in but brush application is different from finger swatches so I'm just cautious no matter what Yeah, that's quite pretty. And I think I'm going to use um, Death Moth on the lower lash line with a very small precision smudger. And this is what I'm talking about. It's a Smashbox precise smudger brush. Back into Spider. I'm just going to line, line the lower lash line. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Okay. That's not bad at all. All right. So I do want to deepen up uh, some more. I'm not happy yet. I'm going to go back in with this Packer brush and just go back into Death Moth and try to add more on the outer lid and then go with spider on top. It's back and forth between death moth and spider. Okay, that looks pretty nice, and I feel like adding a little bit more Mantis just underneath the liner on the lower lash line. Okay, that way I've got the green here and the green here, and there's kind of that offsetting effect, and I don't mind that at all. And now for the very, very inner lid, and I think I'm going to use Fire Butts. And I'm going to go intense on the very inner corner and then just draw it out and fade it um, so that we don't lose all of the mantis on the inner lid. So let's see how that works. And for that purpose, I'm going to use the Multitasker brush from Smashbox. It's a pyramidal or three-sided brush. And Fire Butts is very intense as a color. So I don't need to use very much and I'm scared of overpowering mantis so I have to be super super careful okay so that's the inner corner and I'm going to use my ring finger and just just 
barely touch the pan with mantis, uh, not, not mantis, fire butts. And I'm just going to press very, very lightly. I am using so little. Oh, that is really pretty. <laughs> That's really pretty. I'm super happy with that. And uh, I'm liking spider enough that I think I'm going to do it as liner on the upper lash line as well. So I'm going to go back in with that precision smudger and just get it on the upper lash line. I'm really tight lining along the lashes. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm really liking this. Really, really liking this. Just going a little bit up not a wing, but I just want to lift up the eye a little bit. Okay. Now, I am going to recreate this eye on the other side, off camera, and then we are going to talk about how to finish up the look. Okay, the two eyes are done as far as eyeshadow goes. And uh, I am ready now to finish up the look with liner and mascara. I already have a lip that I think works fine with the above, so I'm not going to change that, although I think a brown lip would look really good with that. Maybe I'll try that later on in the day. But I think these go together. So I am um, I'm thinking of nothing too fancy. I am going to use my Definicil as a mascara and this Empire liner from Urban Decay because I think this deep royal kind of purple would look really nice with the green. And I have already reapplied Perversion liner, another one from Urban Decay, on my upper waterline. So those are the two liners I'm using today. And I thought for a change I would do my mascara and my liner on camera. I don't often do that. Uh, and so I'm going to use this liner right now on my lower waterline. Now there's already that brown spider. That sounds weird. <laughs> on my lower lash line. So this is just for the waterline. Just a little extra oomph with some purple. And it is a deep purple, but I, I think it's just going to add a little something. Okay, there we go. Boy, the, <laughs> the lower lash line is really punchy now compared to the upper lash line. Hopefully that will be remedied with the mascara. And so, as I said, Lancôme Définicile. And it is a mascara that I received in the in one of the two Lancôme holiday sets that I bought, those blockbuster sets. If you want to see more on what it is that I purchased from uh, four four kits, holiday kits that I purchased, I will put it right there for you. If you're curious about them, those kits are fabulous. And the Lancôme last year was absolutely fantastic. If you love eye makeup, it was really good and it still had all the same skincare type of products in there, but the shadows blew me away. They were amazing. And actually, I think that the shadows could create something not quite as green as Mantis, but definitely something green. Okay, so that looks all right. Let's go to the other side. It's 
go to the other side. That's something I say a lot with uh, my training clients. I'm a kinesiologist, aka personal trainer, and uh, sometimes some of the phrases I use with one hat on transfer over to another world. Hmm. Just kind of simultaneously doing the two coats here. And I am going a little heavy with, oh, I just smudged here. It's going to have to dry and I'll flake it off. Uh, I'm doing two coats going a little heavy here because um, that's as much as I'm going to do on the upper uh, lash line. And I even got mascara on my hair. I am a messy woman today. Okay, so apart from the mascara smudge, I am really liking how this look turned out. I it's It exceeded my expectations. I was a little nervous. Haven't used a color like Mantis on my eyes recently. Unless it's um, a really blingy green, lime green highlighter on my inner to center lid, I don't tend to wear a whole lot of greens or like a grungy green that pulls more to the taupe. I can use that without too much hesitation, but I, I was a little, little concerned today, a little concerned. And green is about the only eyeshadow color that I have that much reluctance on. When it's like a Kelly green, oof, not my thing. Um, I, I'll use blues before I use a Kelly green. <laughs> Except on St. Patty's Day. I make an exception. I can look as lousy as I, as I need to to sport the Kelly Green. I'm not Irish, but I do respect the fact that um, there is uh, St. Patty's Day. Okay, I am rambling at this point. I'm going to put on some setting spray, which is this guy. And it has been waiting for me to finish the Morphe setting, a continuous setting mist. So uh, spoiler alert for my empties, I did finish that one, but I don't want to spray my makeup. So I'm going to go just step off camera, get that done and give you my closing remarks, so to speak. Okay, there we go. This is the final look with the setting spray, everything. I did reapply a little bit of this Makeup Forever C211 that I'm almost done with. <laughs> uh, that is going to be um, an empty in my advent calendar project, penning project, uh, coming up in a couple of days. You can look out for that video. I did not even notice this. Take a look. My eyeshadow and my lips. The palette and I are twins. I am really impressed with my first impressions. I think it the look was effortless, really. I had my trepidations at the beginning, but every time I picked up another shadow, in my head it was, oh, this is, this is going on smoothly. It's blending nicely with the other shadow or two shadows I'm blending with. Spider was a delight, even though it didn't swatch very well. Uh, Mantis is beautiful and doesn't fade. I find when I'm trying to blend out pastels, they sometimes blend to nothing and the green was still showing showing pretty well i did notice though that mantis shows with more blue in it if you pack it on with a packer brush and more towards the minty when you're using a crease brush so, so that that was interesting and i'd have to take that into consideration when i'm planning on using it in a look depending on the brush i use i'm going to get a different effect and it's not often that i see not only a change in concentration of color, but a change in hue. It's not bothering me, it's just something I need to consider. The um, Fire Butts looks fantastic as a topper, and I, I did manage to tap it on in a way where Mantis still shows through, so I'm, I'm delighted about that. I was worried that it was going to overpower, it does not. Uh, web on the brow bone, I think, worked out really nicely and can be used in most look looks, I suspect. And it's a good thing because the only other brow bone color I think is available is Tree Hopper, and that is somewhat questionable whether or not it can act as a um, as a brow bone highlight. My preference would have been a white or a beige matte, but Web is fine. It works fine. It, it really really brings attention to the brow bone, which I don't have a problem with. And I think Spider did a really great job as a liner. 
uh, upper and lower uh, lid. I, it's, it shows up even though it doesn't look like that much of a, a deep color in the pan, it does do a good job as a liner and I'm really satisfied with that. I think that's it. I'm, yeah, I'm happy with the look. I ended up using two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, five shadows in this look, so a third of the palette. And um, I won't give my final thoughts on the palette, obviously. This is a first impressions, but you can expect some more looks with this palette uh, over the coming weeks. Let me know what you think. I'm turning it over to you. Do you like the look? What do you think of the palette? Are you interested in it? Do you have it? What do you think? I would love to hear your comments as usual. And with that, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it every single time. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. But for now, take care.